Yes. See, till now in this chapter, we have discussed about residential status. Residential status of an individual as a C, residential status of a company, residential status of the firm, residential status of HUF, we all discussed about the rules. So, residential status, you know, there are two main categories. One is resident and one more is non-resident. So, under resident, there is an ordinary resident and one more category is not ordinary resident. And for, for these, there are certain rules. There are certain rules they have mentioned. That is, one is basic condition that is mentioned under section 6 clause 1 and additional condition mentioned under section 6 clause 6. So, what is a basic condition? Basic condition is nothing but he has been there in India in the year for period or periods amounting in all for 182 days. That means in the previous year, SSC should live in India for at least half of the year. That is first basic condition. Second basic condition is he must have stayed in India in the previous year for 60 days and 365 days in aggregate. 365 days in aggregate in 4 years preceding the previous year. 4 previous year preceding the previous year. So that is total of 365 days it should be there in India in, two, in 4 previous year preceding the previous year plus 60 days in the previous year. That is second basic condition that we know. So any one of these condition is satisfied then the individual is uh, referred as resident. Individual is said to be a resident if any one of these conditions is satisfied. What are the exceptions to the rule? Exceptions, we know, suppose uh, if the SSC leaves India for the purpose of employment and not for studies. In that case, he must have stayed for 182 days instead of 60 days. That means only first condition applies. Second condition is not there. Second condition is not there in case if he leaves India for the purpose of employment. Second exception to the basic condition 2 is if he is a foreign national of Indian origin. In that case, what do you mean by foreign national? That means his parent or his grandparents were born in undivided India, that is before independence. In that case, foreign national of Indian origin. In that case, also only first basic condition is available. Second uh, basic condition does not exist. That is the uh, rule. So now, after that, we discussed about non-resident. Who is a non-resident? Person who stayed for less than 182 days. Less than 182 days in the previous year, that person is a non-resident and he fails to satisfy any one of the two basic conditions. In that case also, person is declared to be a non-resident. Then, there is an additional condition. Additional condition that is resident and ordinarily resident. So, when and all an SSE can be treated as resident and ordinary resident. So, there are two conditions given. First is, he should be a resident for at least two years out of previous ten years preceding the previous year. That is first basic condition. That is first additional condition. Then, after that, along with this, we need to satisfy one more additional condition. What is that one more additional condition? He must have been there in India for at least 730 days. During the seven year, immediately preceding the previous year. So here there is an and is given. And means both the condition he should satisfy. Then only he can be a resident and ordinary resident. In the previous case, what happens? Or any one of the basic condition if he satisfies, he can be considered as a resident. Yes. Then the resident and not ordinary resident, when the SSC can be declared as resident and not ordinary resident. When he satisfies any one of the basic condition but fails to satisfy both the additional condition, in that case he is a resident and not ordinarily resident. Then HUF uh, theory we discussed about ordinary resident, not ordinary resident, non-resident. So these are things are there. This, this and all we have discussed. For companies, yes. Then problems we have seen. Then next topic so is incidence of tax liability. Incidence of tax liability. Scope of total income. So now you know there are three categories of people. One is OR, one is NOR and last person is NR. So now, so when and all person can be treated as OR? That we need to see. Ordinary resident, then not ordinary resident when and all he can be treated and non-resident when and all he can be treated. That means here when and all NR is taxed, when and all uh, NOR is taxed, when and all OR is taxed, that we need to see. So for that one specific chart is given, 
this we discussed see this chart so first case first case is income received in india source outside india income received in india source or accrued or arose outside india in that case all three people are taxed if ssc is or taxed if ssc is nor is also taxed if ssc is nr is also taxed second case source is from india received outside india in that case also all three category is taxed yes third one income accrued and received outside india from a business controlled in or a profession set up in india what do you mean by business controlled or profession set up in india that means nothing but it is managed from india managed from india in this case what happens only first two is taxed only first two is taxed or and nr is taxed and nr is not taxed yes next fourth one is source is outside india received outside india in that case only or is taxed other two nr and nr is not taxed past and taxed profit if it is brought to india in the previous year remitted to india in the previous year all it is exempt not taxable all three category or nr and nr not taxable so these are the five rules you need to remember before solving the problem so how to remember this rule 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 you can remember like that so very easy then what and all circumstances under which various categories are taxed and not taxed one table is given for uh, calculation purpose that you can see that we have discussed now we will directly move on to the problems now we will directly move on to the problems see third one problem number 3 see this Nayar gives you the following particular of his income earned during the previous year. So now I will ask with you one by one. So you you should be able to tell me whether all categories are taxed or what is the rule. You should able to tell me. First one, interest on Indian company dividend. Yes. Now tell me, anyone? Then Pragati. Taxed in it. Interest on Indian company dividend. Taxed. All three, whether all three are taxed, O R N O R and N R. Yes, all. Yes, all three are taxed. Correct answer. Why? Because source. Because is it's an Indian company. Yes, Indian company. Correct. So that is why all three are taxed. Because received in India, source is from India. If received in India, all three are taxed. Source is from India, received anywhere, all three are taxed. Yes. So first one is all three. Second one. Interest on bank fixed deposit fifteen thousand accrued but not received. Okay, in this case, Pragati. Yes. Pragati. Shavya. Are you there? See the second one. Interest on bank fixed deposit fifteen thousand accrued but not received. Yes. Dayanand, can you answer? It will be tax, sir, because it is accrued in India. Accrued in for India. For all three. Yes, all three. For all three. Correct. Yes. So this not received doesn't matter. Source is important. Accrued in India from India. Yes. All the year tax. Third one, income from agriculture in England, fifty thousand, of which thirty thousand is remitted to India. Okay, in this case, what happens? Thirty thousand is taxed, sir. Whether thirty thousand is taxed, sir. One show the question again. Income from agriculture in England. Fifty thousand, of which thirty thousand remitted to India. What do you mean by remittance? Remittance means Sir, transfer for, to India. Sir, for ordinary resident, fifty thousand hmm. full will be taxed. Yes. For not ordinary resident and non-resident, only thirty thousand will be taxed in India. Thirty thousand is not taxed. Why here not taxed? Because it is not received in India. It is just transferred from foreign country to India. Only O R is taxed with fifty thousand amount. Any doubt regarding this?
प्रगति Yes, now see this. Income from agriculture in England. So, if we income from agriculture in India, so any so suppose income from agriculture in Bangalore, whether it is taxed, whether it is taxed, exempt, exempt. So now here. Outside India, income from agriculture, so it is taxed in the hands of OR only. That is ordinary resident only. Then what about that thirty thousand? Thirty thousand remitted to India. So remittance doesn't matter. Why remitted doesn't mean received in India, isn't it? Remitted doesn't mean received in India. Source is outside India. Received outside India. They have just transferred that income to India. So in that case, only OR is taxed and Other do not tax it. Zero amount for N O R and N N R. Whether this is correct or any other method is there? Correct, sir. Yes. See, this is third case. Now, fourth one: income from house property in England deposited in a bank account. Now, in this case, see the question. Tax for all three. No, no. How all three? House property is located in England. Received in England. Yes. Can you? Sir, can you show? In? Yes. Income from house property in England deposited in a bank there. Ah, uh, then only ordinary resident. Yes, only ordinarily resident. Why source outside India received outside India? That is the fourth point. Fifth one profit on sale of building in Mysore received in England. In this case, tax for all three because yes. that building is in India. Yes, because source is from India received anywhere doesn't matter. Even if it is received in India, all three tax. Even if it is received outside India, all three is tax. Why? Because source is from India. My source is in India. Okay. Now, sixth one. Income from business in Singapore controlled from Bombay. Rupees sixty thousand. Half of this is received in India. Now, this is very important. Yes. Can you tell me the uh, amount now? Shravya. प्रगति यस सर यस कैन यू टेल मी द अमाउंट दिस क्वेश्चन इनकम फ्रॉम बिजनेस इन सिंगापुर कंट्रोल फ्रॉम बॉम्बे 60000 हाफ ऑफ दिस इज रिसीव्ड इन इंडिया सो व्हाट इज द टैक्स लाइबिलिटी 30000 सर कैन नो आर एंड एन आर हम Yes. For over, uh, what is the tax liability? Uh, uh, show the question, sir, again. See this question. Sixty thousand total. Uh, NR is thirty thousand, sir. NR thirty thousand. Okay. Hmm. Uh, then, uh, resident is thirty thousand. Resident thirty thousand. How thirty thousand? For over uh, 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 sixty thousand, sixty thousand. Yes, over sixty thousand. Next, NOR thirty thousand. No, NOR is not thirty thousand. Why? First, we need to see income from business in Singapore controlled from Bombay means what is this case? Yes, sir. Yes, income from business in Singapore controlled from Bombay means income from business in Singapore controlled from Bombay means what is this case? This case is managed from India. Whenever it is managed or controlled from India, first two is taxed fully. First two is taxed fully. That means what? O R and N O R is taxed with full sixty thousand, and remaining N O R is taxed with half of the amount. Why half of the amount? Because it is received in India. So answer is sixty, sixty, and thirty. Whether this is clear? Yes, sir. Yes. So that is sixth point. Next one. 
pension from former employer in Bombay received in England? 40,000. Can you tell me now? Anyone? Can you tell me now? Pension? Everything is taxable. Everyone is? Taxable. Yes. Everyone is taxable. Correct. Why? Because your source is from Bombay. See this. His employment source is from Bombay. Received in England. That doesn't matter. Everyone is taxable. 40,000. Next, past untaxed profit of 1998-99 brought to India during the previous year. 80,000. In this case, it is not taxed for anybody. Yes. Exempt. This is exempt. Past untaxed profit is exempt. So, after seeing this question, you are required to compute the total income. Total income or tax uh, taxable total income, you need to see if it is a OR, NOR and NR. So, how to solve the problem? You need to do the format particular and three column that is OR, NOR and NR and write everything like this. First one, interest on Indian company pension. Whatever given in the question, except for the amount, write as it is. Write as it is and apply the rules. Apply the rules. See this Indian company we know everyone is taxed. Then the interest on bank empty we discussed. Everyone is taxed. That is from India. Then income from agriculture in England. So now that is source outside India, received outside India, only OR is taxed. Income from house property in England. See this. Received there. That is why only OR is taxed. So so have you understood the format now? Solution part. Solution part. Yes, sir. Yes. Nothing you have to do. Just you need to remember the rule and apply the rules and you need to write whatever given in the question as it is and apply the rules and write the amount under respective columns. Yes. So, income from house property in England, only OR is taxed. Profit on sale of building in Mysore, as we discussed, all three are taxed because source is from India. Income from business in Singapore controlled from Bombay. That is, first two are taxed with full amount, 60,000, because it is managed from India. And remaining NR, 30,000. Why? Because half of the amount is received in India. That is why only 30,000. 60,000 divided by 2. Pension from former employer in Bombay, everyone is taxed because it is from India. Past and tax profit, it is not taxable for all three categories. After doing all these things, you need to find out the total. Total of the OR will be 3,6,000, NOR is 2,31,000, NR is 2,1,000. So, my question is, why OR total is always more? So, highest total will be of OR, second highest will be of NR, third highest will be of NR. Why? Can you tell me? Because he is not taxed in other countries also. Who? OR. Banner OR or NOR or NR. Sir, because OR, you will get lot of other exemptions in India. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, that's why now everything will be taxed for him so that he gets that exemption. Yes. But yes. whereas for non-resident and all, mm. in their country also they are taxed mm. separately yeah. for their income. So, mm. In, mm. so, it should not be double tax. That's why they don't get, uh, they get few exemptions in India. Mm -hmm. And Yes. Yes. So, th that is the reason to avoid double taxation, tax on tax. Because suppose there is a multinational transaction. Suppose uh, there is one person lives in uh, two different countries. Goes and comes, once he comes to India and goes back to some other country. In that case, what there may be a chance of double taxation also. So now, that is the reason OR is, OR's tax or total balance will be more. Why? Right? Because for everything OR is taxed. For each and everything OR is taxed. NOR, it will be less. Why NOR is less? Because he is not a common man or he is not a common citizen in India. What do you mean by not a common citizen? So, he, he, is, he lives in India but he doesn't satisfy, he 
doesn't satisfy additional conditions additional conditions then n r is you know n r you know non resident person who is not there in india at all that means less than 182 days in the previous year he was there in india yes so th that is about third problem third problem very simple problem calculation of tax liability scope of income yes so any doubt regarding this problem any doubt regarding the third problem you can ask me now any doubt regarding the problem number 3 yes any doubt regarding the problem number 3 dal and pragati shravya any doubt no sir no doubt pragati no yes fine shravya uh, no sir yes so now we discuss third one now next problem next problem we are going to see problem number 4 problem number 4 that is compute the total income of mr abaya from the following particulars if he is or nor and n same thing we need to do so now one by one we need to discuss first point income from property in kenya received in mysore what is this case now property in kenya received in mysore tax for all three tax for all the why source outside india received in india yes received in india means all three yes correct answer second one income from business in bombay controlled from japan business in business is in tax for all three yes why tax for all three source is in india source is in india yes so fourth rule doesn't apply what is that fourth rule business is suppose now we will reverse this and we will reverse this suppose now let us assume income from business in japan controlled from bombay in that case only for first two it will be taxed yes only for first two in that case managed from india but in this situation now whatever given in the uh, this one question income from business in bombay controlled from japan even if it is managed outside india doesn't matter because source is from india that is why all three are taxed yes so now income from e england development board 1 by 5th received in mysore 50000 in this case amount i want amount now for ordinary resident it is 50000 yes. but for uh, not ordinary resident and uh, no, non resident it is only 10000 yes first one 50000 second and third 10000 yes why because first we need to see income from england development bond only or is taxed that is true 50000 then what about remaining other they are not taxed nor and n are not taxed but received in mysore they have given received in mysore that means what everyone is taxed so 1 by 5 1 by 5 means 50000 into 1 by 5 if you do 10000 so 10000 remaining up to category nor at end so answer is 50000 10000 10000 yes income from agriculture in hassan what about this income from agriculture in hassan Exempt. exempt yes exempt why because it is agricultural income in india yes that is why it is exempt next fifth one income earned from business in sri lanka controlled from chennai now for the first two it is tax yes first two it is tax see this fifth entry fifth adjustment is the reverse of second one fifth adjustment is a reverse of second one why in the fifth adjustment it is controlled from india whenever it is controlled from india or and nr is taxed nr is not taxable yes now sixth one interest on deposit with the bangalore branch of hsbc bank so hsbc bank is a foreign bank isn't it hsbc bank is a foreign bank bangalore branch in this case who had all tax 
Can you tell me interest on deposit with Bangor branch of HSBC Bank thirty thousand? All three. All three. Yes. Why all three? Because that branch is functioning from India. Yes. Yes. That that is the reason. Correct answer. Because branch is from India. Working is done from India. And received in India. That is why all three are attached. Thirty thousand. Next one. Dividend from Indian company. What about dividend from Indian company, Shravya? All three. Why all three? Dividend from Indian company. Yes, all three. Whether tax or exempt. Uh, tax. No, it is not taxed. Why? Because dividend from Indian company is exempt from taxation. Because it is exempt from tax, so all three not taxable, exempt. So no uh, amount you should write in all the three column. Suppose if it is from foreign company, suppose dividend is from foreign company. In that case, tax for all. Tax for all when when it is received in India. When it is received in India, tax for all. Suppose now dividend from foreign company received outside India. In that case, um, source outside received outside. In that case, uh, not tax. No, see this source outside received outside means I will tell you. I will uh, I will show the chart. Uh, this one chart now. See this. Source outside, received outside means which category comes? That we need to see. Yes, it is in these five rules. What is our category? Source outside, received outside means B. B. If you see income accrued and received outside India, whether remitted to India or not, that means what? Only OR is taxable. So, foreign company dividend received outside India only OR is taxable. Foreign company dividend received in India all three are taxable. Indian company dividend received in India all three are exempt. Indian company dividend received outside India all three are exempt. Yes, whether this is clear. Yes, sir. Yes. So now, next one. Yes. Where is that question? Question number four. Yes, we are discussing about question number four. Yes, dividend from Indian company is exempt. Now, next one. Gift from a friend received in India on occasion of marriage anniversary. Yes, very important. Case. For all three, all three what taxable or exempt? Tax. Tax. Yes, why it is taxed? Because it is marriage, marriage anniversary, not marriage. Yes, if it is a marriage, if it is a marriage, it is exempt from tax. If you receive any gift on occasion of your marriage, it is exempt from tax. But in this case, it is not a marriage; it is marriage anniversary. So after one year or second year, after third year of anniversary, suppose if you receive any gift from your friend, uh, in that case, what happens? It is taxable. Seventy-five thousand is taxable. But what is the rule for gift? What is the rule for gift? Can you tell me the rule? If you know, fifty thousand is uh, not taxable. Yes, if it is below fifty thousand. If it is below fifty thousand, whether it is received in cash or in kind, it is not taxable. If it is above fifty thousand, it is taxable. Whether it is cash or in kind, and what 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 we can do? Aggregate of gift is taxable. That fifty thousand means what? Aggregate of fifty thousand, isn't it? What do you mean by aggregate of fifty thousand? Suppose you receive from friend one laptop worth forty thousand, watch worth twenty thousand. In that case, whether you treat that uh, transaction separately or together, together. 
Yes, together. That is that is what the meaning of aggregate. Aggregate. Forty plus twenty more than fifty thousand. That is why it is taxed. Aggregate of gift should exceed fifty thousand. Yes, in this case all three because received in India and marriage annuities. Next one. Interest accrued in Jaipur received in Singapore. Yes. Tax for all. Yes, all three because Jaipur is in India. Yes, that is true. All three are taxed. Income from pension for services rendered in India received in Japan. Again, tax for all three. Yes, because source is from India. Because source is from India, all three are taxed. Next, interest on post office saving bank account ten thousand. POS it is tax, but later it will. Sorry. It is tax. It is tax. What portion? Uh, like uh, first one thousand five hundred is exempt. Remaining will be taxed. Three thousand, I guess, something like that. I don't know the proper limit. Yes, yes, yes. See this. In the case of single account holder. Post office saving bank account, single account holder, up to three thousand five hundred, it is exempt. Up to three thousand five hundred, it is exempt. Remaining is taxable. And in the case of joint account holder, suppose there is joint account holder, up to seven thousand, it is exempt. Then remaining is taxable. If nothing is given in the question, if nothing is given in the question, we will assume that. It is of single account holder. So whenever there is a single account holder up to three thousand five hundred exempt, that means what amount we are, we are going to write here? Six thousand five hundred. Six thousand five hundred for all three. Six thousand five hundred for all three. Yes. Gift from relative in India forty two thousand. Now. Gift from relative in India forty two thousand. Savya. It is exempt. Yes, exempt. Savya, see now gift from relative in India forty two thousand is exempt. Why? Because relative means who and all comes. Can you tell me relative who and all come under the category of relative? Can you tell me, Diana? Spouse, children, your parents. Yes. Then your brother and all. Yes, yes. So there is specific provisions are in specific term. All that things are mentioned under taxation system or taxation act. Who and all comes under the category of relative? Yes. So now suppose now relative gives you a gift above fifty thousand. In that case, what what you will do? That is also exempt, sir. That is also exempt. Why? Because relative exempt. Yes, true. Similarly, in the case of marriage, also. Yes, exempt. Gift from relative in India is exempt for all three. Now, next one. Interest on Indian government security. Next one is interest on Indian government security. What about this one? Eighteen thousand. Yes, taxable. All three are taxable because it is from India. Yes. Next, interest on deposit with Pakistani branch of Indian Bank. SBI is a Indian bank, so Indian bank having a foreign branch in this case. In this case, see this fourteenth one. What about this Indian bank having foreign branch? Savya, are you there, Savya? Can you unmute yourself? See now, see 
Indian bank have it for its branch. So in this case, only OR is taxable. Whether this is true, Banan, only OR is taxable. Whether I am right or wrong? Yes, sir. I think. So. Yes. So. Yes. Why? I'm Why? not sure. Yes. What? Because I will tell you, interest on deposit with Pakistani branch of SBI means see bank where the bank is now. Bank is in Pakistan. Bank is in Pakistan, and interest occurred. Interest also on deposit with Pakistani branch. You are getting the interest there itself. So this is a case of source outside India received outside India. In simple word, we can say source outside India received outside India. That is why only OR is taxed. Have you understood this one? Yes, sir. Understood. Yes. Fourteenth one. Now fifteenth one. Profit from sale of standing crops in India twenty five thousand. Yes. This one profit from sale of standing crops in India twenty five thousand. What about this? Whether tax for all? Yes, tax for all three. Tax for all three. O R is also taxed. N O R is also taxed. N R is also taxed. Last one past untaxed profit two thousand fifteen sixteen brought to India during the previous year. Exempt. Yes, it is exempt. It is exempt. So this type of question comes for 16 marks. 16 points are given. It is for 16 marks. If you get one correct, you get one mark. For each sentence, one one mark. Yes. So from residential status chapter for four mark calculation of uh, residential status of an individual SSC. That number of days that uh, question comes. And for 16 mark, this type of question calculation of tax liability. Yes, for O R N O R and N R comes. So solution part. Now we need to see solution part. Since now we discussed all these things, so what is the solution? You need to write whatever is given in the question as it is, except for the amount. Then you can apply the rule. See, it is income from property in Kenya received in my source. Source is in the in India. That is why all three income from business in Bombay controlled from Japan. Again. See sources from India, all three. Income from England Development Bonds, one by fifth received in my source. This also we discussed here. First thing, first you exclude the bracket and see, see the sentence. Income from England Development Bonds. So sources outside India received outside India. Only one, only one fifty thousand. Others are not taxable. But in the bracket they have given one by fifth received in my source. That is why received in my source means it is in India. All three. That is why remaining two categories are taxed with ten thousand. That is one by five. Fifty thousand into one by five. If you do ten thousand, income from agriculture in Assam exempt. Why? Because it is in India. Income earned from a business in Sri Lanka controlled from Chennai. Managed from India only. First two are taxable. That is true. Interest on deposit with Bangalore branch of HSBC Bank. That is foreign bank having Indian branch. This is the case of foreign bank having Indian branch. So branch is in India. Received interest is in India. All three are taxed. All three are taxed. Dividend from Indian company we discussed. It is exempt. Gift from friend received in India on occasion of marriage anniversary is taxed. All three are taxed. If it is on occasion of marriage, it is exempt. Interest on accrued interest accrued in Jaipur but received in Singapore. Again, sources from India. All three are taxed. Income from pension service rendered in India. Again, sources from India. All three are taxed. Interest on post office saving bank account. I told up to three thousand five hundred for single account holder exempt. So remaining is taxed. Ten thousand is given. Three thousand five hundred you deduct. Remaining six thousand five hundred is taxed. Gift to from relative in India. It is exempt for all three. Yes. So interest on Indian government securities. I told it is again from sources from India. All three taxed. Interest on deposit with Pakistani branch of SBI. This is Indian bank having foreign branch only OR. Only OR is taxed. Remaining two are not taxed. Profit on sale of standing crops in India. All three are taxed because source is from India. Past untaxed profit. We know all three are exempt from tax. So now we, after doing all these things, we need to know the total. Total of OR is total is very important. Total of OR is seven lakh forty nine thousand five hundred. 
total of NOR is 6,49,500, total of NR is 4,49,500. But you can see here, OR total is always more. First column total is always more than the second column. Second column total is always more than the third column total. Yes. So this is how we are going to solve this problem, 16 mark problem. So any doubt regarding this, you can ask me now. You can ask me any doubt regarding this problem. Shavya Dayanand, any doubt regarding this problem? Any doubt? 